everybody um up here in grange in north county sligo my intention today i had some things to do but while i was here my intention was to try and go and find a standing stone with about an iron age probably 2000 plus year old swastika on it but the weather's quite poor and the photographs wouldn't come out that good so i'll, I'll give it a miss but yeah and it's also in a, a mucky field and it's raining today and i don't have my wellington boots or anything so unfortunately i won't be doing that instead somebody asked me about the shield in a gig the other day the ubiquitous and iconic statues of mostly ancient ireland well not ancient super ancient of ireland of a woman in a strange pose using usually usually pulling a face while using her hands to open her vagina or vulva and they appear mostly in Ireland, but there's quite a few in England and a summit. There's at least one in France that I know of. And it's an awful lot of nonsense has been written about them over the years or assumptions. I would say just about every book ever published on the Sheila and the Gigs is nonsense. It's new, they're the New Age or Wicca nonsense talking about the goddess, and it's completely made up. Not, it's just completely made up stuff. Jack Roberts has the best book on the Sheila and the Gig. He just started with a clean slate looking at them all over again. And that came out a few years ago. So Jack Roberts' book on the Sheila and the Gig, if you want to get a book on the Sheila and the Gig to read. The rest I wouldn't bother. They're, they're, they're pretty awful, you know. They're all written by Wiccan goddesses and stuff like that. And they talk, uh, compare them to Lilith and stuff like that. So the Sheila and the Gig, okay. Now the Sheila and the Gig is a grotesque, it's a gargoyle basically. In fact, the one that's in France may not be an actual legitimate Sheila and the Gig, the famous one. That may well be a gargoyle, but the but it could be a it's probably derived from the Sheila and the Gigs of Ireland. But they basically the the same thing, pulling a face, opening the legs. Now they appear not only in churches, and this is the thing. When I started to look into this stuff, the because they appeared mostly on churches, I was quite surprised to find that, oh, that's interesting, it's a Christian symbol, like the Green Man. Now, we know the Green Man has pagan origins, and therefore, so something, some lineage that Sheila and the Gig came from has a pagan origin also, we assume, you know. But they do seem to be from a lot of monastic and churches in the mid middle ages but not not exclusively for instance there are a couple of ones that are tell a deeper story like, there's lots of them that are embedded in town walls and houses the walls of houses and things like this but there's a couple of very intriguing ones there's one on a standing stone in the cemetery in the churchyard at the at the hill of tara on the hill of tara to one side is an old churchyard with a graveyard there's actually a standing stone in there with a shield and a gig on it. Now that's quite intriguing. It's not a cross, it's not a crucifix. It's a standing stone and it's set away from the church. There's a, so it's probably part of the original pagan infrastructure of Tara. There's also one inside a round tower. Now that's very interesting as well. So there's, you know, that's like double happiness for me. There's a shield and a gig and a round tower and it's in a round tower inside of that might add you have to go into the round tower so the shield and the gig statue you really do have to look beyond the assumptions now some people have said to me that they really showed up in the middle ages and because they're basically built into castles and churches and monastic institutions from the middle ages so we're talking about just before the time of the vikings maybe a little earlier and they're a christian symbol that seems to on the surface to be true but then again what they tell us the the green man as i had mentioned is also a christian symbol in fact in boyle abbey in county roscommon inside the, the which is the ruins and amazing ruins of a of an abbey uh, with romanesque uh, architecture inside the main cathedral what's left of it it's ruins now but it's still worth it's still worth visiting it's amazing there's also a round tower there too as well, but uh, the remains of one. But uh, 
above the altar on one side is a shield and a gig and on the other side is a green man so these are very you know pagan-esque symbols to be inside christian christian places and the the, the christian ownership or should i say gatekeeping of the shield and a gig is quite interesting too in the 1990s there was a plan to do a major exhibition at the national museum in ireland on the shield and a gig and it was it was shut down by the jesuits gatekeepers archaeologists in Maynooth. you see in ireland the, the gatekeepers are on both on two sides the catholics the in Maynooth at the jesuits the jesuits in Maynooth through the catholic side of the gatekeeping and the royal irish academy on, on the protestant side do the gatekeeping that they're the ones who have 900 books uh, that are untranslated of early Ireland, Irish history and mythology, which I'll get to in a bit, that, that plays a part in the story. So the Sheila and the Gig, the female figure, she's, she's, she's usually got her legs crossed or open. She's opening her vagina with her hands, and sometimes she's in a kind of a Cali-esque kind of thing, which is very, I think, interesting because that may betray an Indo-European heritage going way back. She's, uh, you know, there's an assumption that she's a fertility deity. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. You know, you have the phallus all over the place in terms of the standing stones and all this kind of thing. Why wouldn't you have a female fertility, you know, deity that was showing her opening her vagina and this kind of thing, representing the, the, the circle of life and all this stuff and so on. Now, the shield and the gig caused tremendous embarrassment among sort of like people for centuries, although not among the Irish peasant folk. In fact, even today in Ireland, if you go into the houses of normally respectful people, you know, people who live in suburbia or just people who just rarely members of society, there'll often be a shield and a gig replica hanging on the wall. And so you have like foreign visitors coming to Ireland and they meet this couple that you might stay in their 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 B and B, and they meet this these Irish people who are like you know just regular nice middle class Middle Ireland people, and there hanging on the wall in the in the in the hallway, is a, is a figurine of a woman holding her vagina open, you know, but uh, so that's you know that's kind of interesting that it's it's it's, it's in the culture, and uh, people sell lots of jewelry of them, and they're very it's a very common symbol in Ireland, but. In the Puritans, during the time of the Puritans, they didn't have much power in Ireland. But I'd say like the more sort of like a free Presbyterian, Puritanical, Protestant sex, they referred to the Sheila and the Gig as a symbol of venereal disease. That she represented the dangers of venereal disease. Highly unlikely because venereal disease wasn't really a problem until about 200 years ago, as a legacy of international trade and shipping. This is why port cities like London and so on were ravaged by, by uh, STDs. It, 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 so in the time that the Sheila and the Gigs were built, STDs were very rare. You know, people generally didn't have sex lives outside their own, own community. And even then, it was not on a scale that came that would become later that would be enough to spread STDs. So that story is highly unlikely. Now, you know me, I like a good mystery, and I have another video on my one of my other channels. I'll put the link down below when I get home. The title of the video is basically "Did the Middle Ages Actually Happen?" There is a a very interesting and very sound theory promoted by Russian academics, that the Middle Ages were invented by the Vatican, basically to make it sound like Christianity was around in Europe longer than it actually was. Now, I'll give you an example. How they discovered this was they, they uh, took the lunar eclipses mentioned in the books of the Middle Ages, and they, they were way off. They would no way... Uh, could have happened on the dates they said. Then they looked at the dates when the lunar, the lunar and solar eclipse would have happened, and lo and behold, they moved the history back forward about a thousand years or something like that. So they 
surmised these Russian academics that the Middle Ages never happened and they were invented by the Vatican to make it sound like Christianity had been around a lot longer than what they said it was. And there's a lot of, there's, there's other corroborating evidence for this. For example, we have almost no document, doc, doc, documentation to prove the existence of Charlemagne. Now that's incredible when you think about it, because Charlemagne was the, the colossus of the Middle Ages, the, you know, the, the Holy Roman Empire, sorry, the Carolingian Empire. It would be like saying that Henry VIII didn't exist, or, you know, Frederick II didn't exist, or, you know, Barbarossa didn't exist, you know, or, or Mao, or, you know, Genghis Khan didn't exist. So, because there's no evidence for him, really. And apparently this, the only evidence to actually even copper fasten the existence of the of the Middle Ages is are in the Vatican Library and they're locked away and you can't have them. Very similar situation to the books on the early history of Ireland. The Royal Irish Academy says they're, t they're too expensive and they're not worth translating. 900 books. Now though I reckon those 900 books are telling the same story that's in the Vatican Library, that there's something dodgy about the historical timelines. They've messed with them. Now, how does this relate to the shield and the gig? I actually been starting to wonder if many of these structures they claim are from the Middle Ages. Now, I've already, you're all, you already know my opinions on the Round Towers of Ireland. They're absolutely not Christian. That the structures of the Middle Ages, even down to, say, monastic institutions particularly those ones built with Romanesque style architecture, which are where the most common one to find shield and the gigs in, were actually pagan centers of learning or pagan centers of... I mean, Clon MacNoise is another one. The, the story of there, I'll be going there in a few weeks with Neil MacDonald. The story of Clon MacNoise is very peculiar. The story of how that was founded and there's missing, there's huge missing, it's like the, it's, there's a huge missing history from the the time of the late Roman Empire, I'm talking about the, say the time of the late Iron Age Roman Empire, so before the birth of the alleged birth of Christ, right, say the 50 BC, 100 BC era, all the way through to nearly the start of the Renaissance, there's a huge missing piece of history. And everything that's in there, including the sheen and the gigs, is all put in a timeline that can't be corroborated by anything historical. And it's and lots books are missing, stories are missing, and they're probably all in the Vatican Library where they're sequestered away, never to be seen. This is one of the most frustrating things about Irish history, is we have so almost nothing from say 100 BC to about the 4th century. Now we know the Romans were very interested in Ireland. They wrote exclusively on Ireland. All you have, and, and even Tacticus in one of his documents even said there's a great interest and a great knowledge of Ireland among the Romans. And where are all these books? And they'd always say, we just don't have them. And it's terribly frustrating because we have a huge historical mystery there that's not, not available to us. The Pope has it, but the Jesuits have it, but we can't have it. Why? And why are they sequestering it away? I'll tell you why. The Russian theory on the missing thousand years of the Middle Ages or so, that they're completely made up and the timelines and calendars were shifted, probably by Sylvester II in 999 AD, who was himself a famous occultist uh, from Spain. The timelines have been shifted, okay? So therefore, there's every reason to believe that these buildings that have the shield and the gigs and the green men were actually pagan sites. Or else they were hybrid. They were probably like universities. And they were high, like, we, we, again, we know, don't know an awful lot about the Coldies, but there's places that give smoke, that have smoking gun elements about them. Iona in Scotland, Clonmacnoise in Ireland, 
Gladstonebury in England. There's huge, there are huge elements of the missing part of the story. And the Sheila and the Gig sit right in the middle of that. Now, the name Sheila and the Gig is an interesting one because it's probably, we don't know what that, we, there's only one source for that, and that was an English antiquarian in Ireland who saw one on the wall of a castle or somewhere and said to a local farmer, what's that thing called? And he said, a Sheila and the Gig. And he wrote it down. And there's no word in Irish for the gig. And there's all kinds of interesting translations of Old Irish, New Irish. But none of them can really tell you what the word sheel in a gig really means. It's of the something. And something of something. And it's written down by one source, an English antiquarian, who probably almost certainly transliterated incorrectly the Irish spelling. And who knows if the local farmer was even taking the piss out of the guy and having a laugh and giving him a fake name for it, you know? So, or there's, maybe he didn't, maybe the farmer didn't even know the name for it. Or maybe it was some, he, he muttered some phrase in Irish to say like, oh, it's a mystery. And the man goes, oh, the gig, you know, that kind of thing. So, the Sheila and the Gigs are a spectacular and profound mystery. They are not only point to unresolved anomalies within the history of Ireland going from the late Roman BC era all the way into the, the, the late Middle Ages, but they also tell us a story of the vast missing section of European history that may never have existed at all and was invented by the Vatican in order to make it sound like Christianity had been around long, had been in control longer, and also to make the, the lives of the saints and the evangelists fit in just the right time period. And there we go. So that's the, the mystery of the shield and a gig. We simply don't know. My own theory is I would go with some of the more esoteric writers that it is a, a, an ongoing legacy of the Indo-European mother goddess brought to Ireland or originated in Ireland but very much in that lineage going back in that Indo-European all the way back to the Paleolithic period of the female goddess as the other side of the fertility structure within theology and within ancient spirituality of the male phallus goddess a god so that would be the shield and the gig for me but again the the big mystery of the shield and the gig is not that it's rude it's not that it's funny it's not that it's we don't know what the name really means or what the actual symbol really means or why it appears in such strange places churches the walls of castles inside a round tower even on a standing stone tower like i said the real mystery is it opens that strange door into that period of missing history that the Russians academics uncovered and I don't think is ever going to go away because there the case they presented was near near bulletproof you cannot you cannot deny the secular nature of the the cosmic cycles they are the ultimate clock and they don't line up what the church has written about the middle ages so the church are lying and we need to know what is the real history. And the shield and the gig, if she's the mother goddess of anything, she's the mother goddess of that missing timeline they call the Middle Ages. Take care.